When you look at Joshua 1, you need to be strongly committed. God didn't address this one, Joshua. I want you to care. I want you to be seriously committed to this thing. He reinforced it. If you want to stop wasting your time and your energy, amen, see what you carry in your heart the most, what you are most committed to. If you want to know what your purpose in life is, you see, don't look with your eyes and ears and go, you know, oh, that looked nice. Is why I said so many people start so much and, and accomplish nothing. The reason this happens, it's not in their heart. It's not in their heart. You need to look in the heart to see, amen, what you are willing to lose all your friends for burning the ship. Burning the ship meaning I'm cutting off anything that is not in alignment with what? What's in my heart? I'm cutting off anything that is not strongly committed amen, to the promises and the things I have to get done. I love Jesus. Jesus is radical this way. Jesus said, in order to carry what I'm putting in your heart, the promise I've made to you, amen, or to the people that I'm going to use you to administer to like Joshua to inherit, he said, you know, sometimes we as, uh, you know, as bishop of this church and as man of God, um, sometimes we do this. We don't, we, we don't want to hurt the people or we don't want to lose the people. So we don't give you the full truth, the raw, as we just said, un, unadulterated truth the way Jesus did. But Jesus said it this way. In order to, for me to keep my promise and for you to work with me as my disciple, to be said in order to be my disciple, amen, that the people will get what I promised. They, they will get it because there's no way around it. In order for you to strong, he says, some of you are going to lose your, your life. He says, some of you are going to lose your wife. Some of you are going to lose mothers and brothers. He said, right off the bat. In that sense, he goes, you have to have skins, what? In the game. He goes, you do not get to play this game without what? Skins. So when the going get tough, you can go, well, I have nothing invested. That's okay. I have nothing to lose. Like you can't come to a certain poker table without a certain, a certain wager. Yeah. He you can't you just come pay 20 bucks. No. Because it's too easy then for you to back up. But some of what we don't want to tell you, we know this is the real price they have to pay. They have to have skins in the game. They have to be strong and courageous, meaning 110% committed to the task. But we don't want to tell them that, can we pray the church will be empty? Mm. So we kind of go, um, you know, we preach around the matter, etc. Not telling them at some point you need to become fully strong and committed to this task. You need to learn to carry this thing in your heart. We try to make it comfortable. Yeah. We try to make it comfortable, palatable. But the Lord is going, but this is why we get so much mediocrity and so much lack of success. Because success takes fully commitment in the heart. You have to be fully committed to whatsoever you are called to do. Now we all don't have the same thing in our heart. I have, I have, a, I have a, a brother in Christ and he's a mechanic. He loves cars. He sees things in cars I can't even imagine them. But one of the things I love about him, he, he, he can work on cars and the things of car all day. He said, time disappeared. Without eating, in fact, his wife every time she said, she said, Bishop, can you talk to him? He won't eat. Because he's so engrossed in the task, she has to call him a different time. Did you eat? Stop and eat. Because this is what he carries on in his heart. He said, you don't have to try to see it. You see, when you're carrying it in your heart and your, your mind starts to rotate, then the heart will start to show you things the Bible teaches this in, in Job chapter 32, Job chapter 32, verse 8. The Bible says there's a vital force in a man, a spirit of intelligence that gives him understanding. If you want the force, the vital force in your heart to reveal the what this thing is and the how and the when and where how to use it, you have to have it in the heart. When you are committed and the consciousness stays close to the heart, then the spirit of God will show you what? Everything it is about this thing. One of the reasons most people, as I said, they, they start things when they go off of it, they never get the vital force to show them because they never committed what? To the thing. Because not everything you will carry in your heart, only the things pertaining to your assignment. But if God put it in your heart, He's also put, amen, the what it is, amen, and how and when and why to use it. You see? My brother, sometimes when I talk to him, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I don't carry cars in my heart. But I love my brother. I carry him in my heart. And sometimes when I look at him and he talks about car, 
it mesmerized me because how he carries it in the heart. His love for it. I'm intrigued to see his passion. There is no way Edison could have finally forged electricity unless he what? Carried it in the heart. The amount of failure, he had to be extremely strong and what? Courageous. 999 failure. At 50 more sugar, I'm done. At 20, I'm tapping out. Waste too much time and energy. But when in your heart, even when the consciousness of we can't figure this out, we don't, you can't what? Pull it down because you're carrying it where? In your heart. A mother that loves her children or her cub. The children sometimes are not behaving, they're misbehaving. They do not listen, etc. But in spite, and they're not being what the parents want them to be. But because you carry them in your heart, you still can't what? Turn away from them. You still want to support them, and you still want the best to them. And you still, you see this ever so often. A, a, a man is, or a woman are 50 years old. Their mother is 80 or 70 and whatsoever. And though they're big men with grandchildren, a big woman with grandchildren, still when their parents see them there as well, they're just like a little child. They still treat them the same. And the big man or woman start to act like what? Right. Like a child. In the midst of them. You understand? Know in the midst of them, the parents still see them the same way. And the child revert, the man reverts back to the state, receiving from his parents the same. Right. Amen? Perfect. This is the natural process that you see happen. Courage naturally comes from conviction. Yes. You'll find a way. When you are convicted, fully committed to this thing, you will be able to do. God knew, God knows there's some things that are going to be challenging and difficult. He knows unless you hit conviction, you will not walk through it. And as a result of this, remember why you keep saying this to Josh, you go, I have a promise I make and I want these people to get something. But there's lots of great, Paul put it this way, Paul said, a great door is open before me to work, but there are great what? Opposition. Many have come to oppose me. How are you going to get through the opposition if you're not committed in the heart? How are you going to get through school when school becomes extremely difficult to be the doctor, to be the lawyer, to, amen? To be the, to, to, to be the investor if you are not what? Convicted. You know, as you look at the different sentences with conviction, they go, and, um, and an architect, and um, a developer must be extremely convicted in their tasks. If not, they'll never develop the things they're supposed to. Because there are times when you're trying to develop something, there's a lot of setback. Right. So they go, they must be extremely committed, amen, to their task in spite, amen, of challenges, etc. When God calls us, He's called us into conviction. The life God gave each and every one of us, it's supposed to be a convicted life, meaning a life that matters. If you're reckless with your heart and you don't realize the heart matters, you'll be reckless with your life. For you to live any life of substance, it has to matter. You go, I don't care what happened in my life. I don't care. When I was a kid, I, I, I didn't understand it. My grandma used to always go. I was raised by my grandma. She used to always go. I can always tell if someone's going to make it or not. She goes, you see, people go, I don't care. I don't care. She will never make it. If the heart doesn't matter, if it doesn't matter, he or she will never do what it takes to protect it, to understand it, to push it forward, to supplement it. It will never happen. It has to matter. For your kids to become who they're supposed to be, they have to what? Matter. For your dreams to come to fruition, it has to matter. For your spirit to be strong, it has to matter. For you to have a good mental space or emotional or physical or resource or career, it has to matter. You have to be able to carry it in your heart. For you to anchor the mind, to get the mind to produce the Bible said, a man, amen, um, in, in um, uh, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 5, the Bible said, a man's heart is like a well of deep waters, amen, God put the spirit of understanding, but a man of understanding can draw it out. For you to draw the spirit of intelligence, Job 32, verse 8, out to give you the what and the how and the when, it has to what? Matter. When you can't find your dream or your destiny, 
and you can't seem to be inspired. In that same chapter, in, 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 right next to Job 32, verse 8, Job 33, verse 4 said this, put it this way. It, it, it is the breath of the Almighty that gives me, it, 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 it's the Spirit of the Lord that gives me life, that gives me breath, and inspires me and stirs me up. If you want the Spirit of God, to, of, of the church, to stir you up and to inspire you, you understand? Then the purposes, the promise God made to you or, or, or your assignment, who you have to help inherit the gift, has to what? Matters. Why the Spirit don't talk to you a lot, what you are asking, does, it doesn't matter to you. It's almost like God goes, if you don't care about this, you think I'm going to waste time with you? You will never put the time and energy. You'll never let it keep you up one night. You'll never pray about these people or things because it doesn't matter to you. My wife is the mother of na nations, and I'm going to tell you why. I see what it does to her when certain things happen to people, how it wrecks her. The only reason it wrecks her is because of what? It mattered to her. Amen. If it didn't matter to her, it doesn't wreck her. She could carry them in her what? In her heart. Only things in her heart that we care about can wreck us. And some go, but I can't pass, Bishop. I can't carry them in my heart because it hurts so much. Here's the problem. It's when you carry them in the heart, the spirit of intelligence will stir you up and inspire you how to bring it to fruition. So avoiding the hurt, you'll also avoid what? The answer, the solution. That is not a good strategy. It's a terrible one, actually. Part of the hurt, amen, convey and confers that you're carrying it in the heart. It's in the right place. Yeah. It matters. If it's not, you probably have it in the wrong place, in the head. Now please understand, carrying it in the head and in the heart are not the same thing. The head is an idea, it's a concept. Oh, God make a promise, these people should inherit that. But I don't have no connection to it in the head. It's just an idea, a thought. Amen? Carrying it in the heart, it's like a woman carrying a child. A woman go through, amen, gestation, amen, for about nine months. They say, an elephant goes through it for two years, 24 months. In that nine months, that woman will produce about a six or seven or maybe even an 11 pound baby. But the elephant that goes through that gestation for two years, he'll produce a baby 200 pounds. 200 pounds. It takes a long time. Many of us are pregnant with the promise of God. You're not showing it yet like a woman in first trimester. She's pregnant, but she's not what? Showing. Amen? She's not showing it. But some of you are carrying some massive promise to different place, different nation, different people for your life. So you're not showing yet. But that'll mean it's not there. You must learn to carry it, amen? Carry it in the heart, nurture it, meaning care about it. Get your mind revolving and praying and petitioning it around it. And the God who was with Moses and Joshua and with Jesus will be with you and see it to what? Fruition. There are many things we want to see happen in this realm. But God is looking for those with courage to see it through. To see it through. I want to look a little bit deeper at the principle of courage. Let's go to the book of Romans. I have two more verses I want to share with you before I end this message today. The heart matters. Romans chapter 14, verse 21 to 23. Sorry, what is that saying? Romans chapter 14, verse 21 to 23. Hmm. There's an interesting process going on here. Some are, they're all Christians in the book of Romans here. And some of them are don't want to eat meat, and some of them want to eat meat. And they're kind of having an argument or a discussion around this subject. Should we eat meat or should we not eat meat? And what's happening there are different levels of um, experience and development. This is what's creating the challenge. So the Apostle Paul will answer this challenge that's going on again. If you have some, if, if you have some time, I encourage you to, to, to do it. And just before, I get in, um, just before I get into verse 21 to 23, verse 17, read. So they're having they're, they're this discussion. So Paul said to them, um, Verse 16 read, Do not therefore let 
what seemed good to you be considered an evil thing by someone else. In other words, do not give occasion for others to criticize that which is justifiable for you. So Paul says something might be good for you, but other people do not have the right context of that. So if you realize that, don't, don't just ignore them and go like, I don't care what they think, I'll just, I'll just do my thing. This speaking strictly in the body of Christ here. So verse 17, and I'll tell you why. He said, after all, the kingdom of God is not a matter of, of getting the food and drinks, amen, food of drink one's life, but instead it is righteousness, that state which makes a person acceptable to God, amen, on heart, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. He said, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. It's not that if you like this food or that food. It's a, it's a kingdom of fear. It's about being right with God. It's about having peace because God is with you. It's about having joy because whatsoever you are facing, God is with you, getting you through, and staying with God in the Holy Spirit. Jesus has come to bring the church into a position that they are right with God, they're enjoying. They're just like God said, I was with Moses, I'm with Joshua. This is what Jesus came. This is when you become a Christian, when I'm God. But I'm, now you're right with me. I'm going to be with you. It does, does this mean you're not going to pass through certain things? If not, you don't need to be strong and what? Courageous. You can, now we can go through all the things, but you have me, so you will have, amen, amen, um, you, 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 the, 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 um, the joy of the Lord will be your strength, you will be with the Lord, so you will, you will have the joy, and you will have the peace, and you will continue to stay in the spirit, in the company of the Lord, amen, so Paul tell them this is what this is about. Now we're going to jump to verse 21, this discussion of them, if you get some time, read this chapter, continue, but in verse 21, the Bible, Paul pick it up, he said, Paul said, in the matters of this eating, the right thing is to eat no meat or drink no wine at all or do anything else if, right, it makes your brother stumble or hurt his conscience or offend or weaken it. Paul said, if what you are doing, the way you live your life, makes your brother, amen, lose his or her conviction, become weakened, then you shouldn't do it because our kingdom is not about eating food or drinking neither. The question is how to operate, get them to operate effective in the kingdom, in righteousness, in, 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 amen, in joy and peace in dealing with the Holy Spirit, meaning with God, how to, how to teach them how to be strong and courageous, how to carry things in their heart with God or for God. Because this is what matters. This is what matters. And you should, you should aid in that process, as you'll see. Now verse 22 reads, Your personal convictions, the things that you are fully committed to, amen, you see, so each one of us must have personal what? Conviction. As I said, what mom carry in her heart is not necessarily what? What I carry in my heart. One in a perfect example as a man married to the first lady. My wife carries carries the um, the people of God in her heart in, in, a, in, a, in a very maternal way. She wanted to make sure this scripture really applies to her. If she realized, if she realized um, um, that eating meat or drinks will hurt them, she will eat meat or drinks. She'll stop doing that to make sure that the, that the children get what they need, that they can be strong. I don't carry them in my heart that way to be truthful. I carry them in, 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 in my heart in a matter of the truth. In a sense, I want them to get the truth. I'm very concerned. The Bible said, when you see the truth, the truth will set you free. I want them to have the truth so they can be free. I want them to learn, amen, how to, how, how to, how to work with God and carry the things of God in their heart and how to have an effective life. So almost they can be weak and I will still try to feed them to help them to be strong, to overcome. I, I seem to operate a lot, much more along the line in the overcomers. My mom doesn't quite work, uh, the first lady, quite that way. If they overcome, nice. If they don't, nice. She doesn't love up on them just the same. For me, I, 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 having them there is not enough. I want them to come to their full potential. I, I, so it seems to push more to the growth side when she, when she goes, hey, don't drive them so hard, they have to eat and drink. There's more stability. Side. It does this mean. But both is necessary. If I don't care, like, like the apostle is showing them about their eating and their drinking, I will have nothing to push. I will drive them too hard. Yes, yeah, I grew up on a farm. I said, no, you plow in fields or, or different thing. You know, somebody just get the work done and you just want to drive the animals to get the work done. But if you don't let the animal rest and eat, you know, their father every so often, you will have nothing to drive. Do you understand this process? Yeah. And if they're just eating and getting fat and thing and not doing nothing, that's great if they are show show horses, but it's not excellent for work horses. Does this make sense? You need both. And God have different people carrying them different ways in the heart. Amen. So the scripture said, 
Mom, I'm sorry. Okay. What time we start? I'll speak we started. We started just before one. Okay. So about just under an hour in. Yeah. Okay. Good. Just about. Okay. Um, but an hour. Yeah. Your personal conviction on such matter exercise them as in God's presence. When are we forty-five? Amen. Thank you. Keeping them, amen, to yourself. Amen. Striving only to know the truth and obey his will. Hmm. Blessed, happy to be envy is he who has no reason to judge himself for what he approves. Amen. Who does not convict himself by what he chooses to do. Meaning, the things that you are that you are personally convicted, you don't betray yourself, you work and live in alignment with them, that you have no reason. It meant to criticize yourself. You see, every time you break away from your own conviction, the things you, you betray, the very things you are carrying to your heart, you're going to feel guilty. You see, you betray yourself. You're not even committed. I'm telling you, if you ever want to succeed, I've been a manager for a long time. And there's one kind of people I can't work with, whether it's on a new project, whether it, are those amen, who give way on their own conviction. Yep. They said they don't eat meat, and the first time meat comes, they're front of them, they're just eating. This person, amen, will, will sell their mother if necessary. You see? But I find it easy to work with people that are convicted, that their personal conviction could be good or bad. One thing I know, they have some standards, and we can work with that. So God, you'll find, us to say, he demands Joshua, he goes, you need to have this commitment here to work with me. If not, there's a chance you'll sabotage the promise that I make to these people. So I need you to have core. I need you to have cards to carry it in your heart. Now look at verse 23. Very, very important. The kingdom of God principle in this matter of conviction. But the man who has doubts, misgiving, and uneasy conscience about heating, and then eats perhaps of you, peer pressure make them decide they didn't want to do this, but because of peer pressure they did it, amen, stands condemned before God. Because, it's fair, because he is not true amen, to his convictions. God demands this of every human being that he made. Whatsoever is dear or you carry in your heart, you have to stand for it. Your mind should rotate expressing everything about it. So if something don't care, you don't care about it, and you're always talking about it, God, that man is just a, he's like a fool. He has nothing in his heart that cares about that matter. But he's just talking because other people are what? There. She don't care to eat this thing. She don't care to do this kind of work. He doesn't care to have this kind of wife. Or but because other people are there, is what's called your showcasing. Your fronting. These are the kind of people, they're people pleasers. They're always doing things that have nothing to do with what? Them. Things that... Doesn't they do not carry in their heart? The Bible said that person stand condemned. They have betrayed himself. And God said, if they betray themselves, what do you think they'll do with me? You see, when you don't want to put no skins in the game, you see, there's almost a guarantee sign you will betray me. But when you are willing to stand up and die and invest for it, you are willing to what? Fight for it. The Bible said. If you go against your own conviction, you stand condemned before God because he is not true to his conviction and he does not act from faith. So the Bible says acting from faith or in courage amen, is to stand on what's in your heart. It says anytime you do not move in alignment with your heart, you stand condemned, convicted amen, of betraying your own conviction. If you want the Lord to have power, amen, and more important, to have federal support, you need to learn to work in conjunction with your own what? Heart. You can't betray yourself. Now, one, now the enemy fully understand this. Satan understand how to weaken the enemy in church and the church. I mean, how to uh, weaken the, the world and, and, and the church. One of the number one things he needs you to do is betray what? Your own heart. Yeah. Integrity. Mm -hmm. You do not have integrity in what you do, what you stand for. 
the things that in your heart you have to able to stand on them. If not, you shouldn't be representing that thing or that person. You shouldn't be representing that thing or that person. I was reading a story recently about Larry Bird, the unique, uh, the extraordinary basketball player. And when he was just about to come into the NBA, they were collecting, they were seeking out agents to represent him. The agent who did end up being his agent. So, and I love this, I love the little component of the story. He's from a small town in Indiana. And typically with small town, it's not just your family representative. The, the people that I was getting interviewed, they were getting interviewed with about, from about 12 different people. The town's mayor, the banker, the school teacher, like all the town's leader come together to protect their boy, this small town boy. This is who is interviewing the agent. It's not just his mother. It's like all the people who have touched his life, communal, this is how they're dealing with it. They're all interviewing the agents together. Anyway, they, they win the down to the final two agents. And they came to this one agent and they go, the last agent we talked to, he give us a price how much he'll take from Larry. We want you to tell us how much you'll take from Larry. He go, I, he take a minute, he go, I can't tell you that. He go, how I work, based on what I get, I take a percentage. They go, no, we want you to tell us, I say you're going to take a million dollars, I take a million dollars, the one I want to get. He go, I can't do that. He go, I don't do that for none of my other players that I represent, and I can't make that exception for Larry. If not, that just wouldn't be right. I can't give him special treatment. What I can tell you, I'll work hard for him. I really want to work for him. And I'll take this a percentage, right? It's 2%, 3%. But that's the only way they go. Well, if you don't tell us this, we're going to go with the other person. Can he give us a number? We know exactly his number. And you realize you're going to lose this deal if you don't. He goes, I don't want to. But... And he just called his wife to go, I think I'm going to get it. And then five minutes after, they walk in to tell him this. <laughs> so he had to call back his wife and, and children and go, um... I don't think I'm going to get it because they demand I'm going to, unless I give them this number, I'm going to lose it. Say, so, you know, but his son or daughter said to him, Dad, I'm very proud of you. You did not um, compromise your integrity just to work with him. Five minutes after the phone ring, they call him. That's his name with Mr. Chase. Mr. Chase, we want you to represent Larry. He goes, why? They go, if you are willing to stand up and not betray yourself <laughs> against us, just to give up. This is the kind of man we want to represent that will stand up and will not betray or compromise when in the negotiation. Perfect. God, if he had did it, it would have caused sin. The very thing he stands for, he would have betrayed. Perfect. If you betray your own principle by not being integral, it was not important to you. You never had it in your heart. In your heart, it might have been in your head, it might have been in the here, it might have been with the people and the community, but not with you. One of the things is I am very guarded what I get involved in and what I do. And the reason for this, I can't afford to spend my time and energy participating in things that doesn't, I don't care about. It's not fair to the thing, it's disrespectful for the principle of God that you must be integral, it must be in my heart to do it. It's stealing someone else's thing that they are carrying in their heart. It's trespassing. It's covetousness. And it's to try to do it with no heavenly support. Because God will not support bad habit. Amen? And sin, that which condemns a man. He won't help you to condemn yourself. You might condemn yourself. But he will not help you to what? Condemn yourself. In essence, he I will not support Amen? these endeavors you undertake that you don't what? Care about that you're willing to run away from at first sign of challenge. And the only reason you listen, everybody has something that they're willing to uh, die for. Now the challenge is, they have most things in their heart that they're not what? Willing to die for. You see, that's how God puts something in your heart. The mind can try to put a lot of things in their heart, but none of them is root. None of them come from core. Perfect. You see? None of them will, will, will let the mind fully express it. They need a here or there already. They call surface. You see? But there is something in your heart. You see? Every so often you see someone that they spend all day and all the time, like an NSC 900, and you go, how do you do that? They carry it in what? Their heart. They don't even have to try. Their biggest challenge is getting the mind to what? Locked in. Perfect. On the heart. Become conscious. Yes. 
He can't think it. You see, one of the things about this order the other that he gets the mind to be everywhere else, so he doesn't have time to get introspection to what? Focus what's in the heart. He goes, look what my mom is doing, look what Pastor Chow is doing, and look what Pastor Grant and everybody else is doing. But while you're doing this, you're not focusing on what you have come to do, what you carry in your heart. You have to do the things you came to do. It is the only place you will get the spirit, that vital force, the spirit of intelligence to what? Distribute. The what and the how and the why, the where, amen, and the when. Only the things that matters to you, you can do well. The things that matter to Pastor Chow, Pastor Chow can do well. Let's finish this work here. The Bible said, Because he's not true to his conviction, the things that in his heart, hmm. and he does not act from faith. For whatever does not originate and proceed from faith, from core, from courage, amen, is sin. Whatever is done without conviction of its approval by God is sinful. God said anything you are doing that is not done from conviction that you don't care about is what? You know why we do so much terrible things? We don't care. When you care about something, you, can't do that. you will never do it. You are careful. Yes. You are careful how you plan for it, and how you strategize, and how you present it, and how you maneuver, maneuver it. But when you don't care, you don't care what, 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 what it becomes and how it presents, etc. There are some um, developers. They're developers. There are some developers, and if they develop a thing that is closed or whatsoever, you try to present it in a way outside of how they see it. They will stop or destroy the whole thing. They go, this thing is misrepresenting me. That's not, they'll come in and they go, what are you doing? We, we are about to present your life. All these are wrong. It doesn't match the heart. And they would rather not have it present than to have it present what? Inappropriate. Mm. They will rather not having it present than to have it present. So God is the same. God said, whatsoever you do, if it doesn't start from core, from the place of courage, you carry it in your heart, you care.